I'm going to call the Thursday, February 27th commission meeting to order. First order on the agenda would be the February 13th minutes. Any changes? None. None. Stand as written. Next item on the agenda would be the financial statement for January 2020. This is financial summaries of revenue and expenditures for month ended January 31, 2020. Revenues in January totaled 6,686,124. That's an increase of 316,000 compared to the same period last year. Some notable areas of increased revenue, transient guest tax or CVB rose 48,000 when compared to a year ago. This would be the first true year over year comparison since the new 2% additional transient guest tax was put on in October of 2018. As annual memberships began to start, golf revenue increased 4,400. Business licenses for general government revenues were up 10,700 due to the semi-annual contractor license renewals. Miscellaneous revenue for the Parks Improvement Fund rose 83,000 due to continued insurance claim funds from the August storm, as well as a large donation for the Lincoln Draw area. One notable area of decrease, miscellaneous re revenue for employee benefits was down 100,000 due to the receipt of a yo low utilization mm -hmm. refund from Blue Cross a year ago. Expenditures in January totaled three million nine sixteen two seventy. That's an increase of a million one one twenty four. Some notable areas of increased expenditure. Leading the increase mentioned above is the salaries line across all funds, as there were three payroll periods this January. That equates to about three hundred thirty eight thousand. Other contractuals for economic development rose eighty seven thousand five hundred due to the timing of the allocation to Grow Hayes. New equipment expenditures were up 58000 due to the purchase of a dual auger detachable snowblower at the airport. And water reserve expenditures increased 120000 as the I-70 water line improvement project continues. A couple of notable decreases. CVB expenditures were off 20500 due mainly to the timing of allocations to outside agencies as well as brochure and marketing material distribution. Social services expenditures fell 82000 due also to the timing of payment of those allocations. Month to date general fund sales tax collections were at 638563 That's an increase of 5329 or just 0.84% as compared to a year ago. The six-month average is at 5%, which is an increase of 2.2 when compared to a year ago. The report of top 10 quarter to date sales tax collections by classification was up 271,424 or 14% when compared to last year. Largest increase among them was in supermarkets, convenience, and liquor stores at an increase of 40%. One segment in there, in that classification in particular, reported a very large increase in January, which indicates a great Thanksgiving for them. These top 10 represent 77.7% .7 of the total sales tax collections for the quarter. And the portfolio certificates of deposit on January 31 totaled $59.55 million with a weighted average interest rate of 2.1%, down 27 basis <laughs> points from a, a year ago. The total of the U.S. Treasuries at par value is now $1.477 million with a weighted average yield to maturity of 1.59. Total balance of the money market account on January 31 was $2.25 million with a current yield of 90 basis points. And Total investments are down 1,176 when compared to this time last year. I'll make a motion to accept the January 2020 uh, financial statement. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any comments? Um, Kim, is there a particular reason we're down so much in our total investments? Uh, quite a few expenditures in January, and we didn't renew a CB or two to do. To, uh, oh, okay. As we indicated, expenditures were up a little over a million, so using those funds to take care of that okay, cash flow. You. So I didn't renew a CB or two in that in, that in January. All right. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. This is 5-0. Next item on agenda would be uh, citizen comments for non-agenda items. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Have mm -hmm. some... Uh, Mayor appointments for approval, um, Brian Garrett to the Hayes Area Board of Zoning Appeals, Russell Koningsman to the Hayes Area Board of Zoning Appeals, and, and Bernie Gribben to the Hayes Area Planning Commission. Move approval of the consent agenda. Seconded. Motion second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda will be water conservation updates and 2020 programs.
off the room right away. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Holly Dickman, Water Conservation Specialist for the City of Hayes. And tonight I'm going to give the <coughs> program update for 2019. So kind of a recap of what happened in 2019 and kind of looking forward into 2020. And I always like to start out by showing a drought monitor just to kind of give us an indication of where we are right now. Um, we're really in pretty good shape as of right now. But in a recent presentation I gave, I, I showed this picture from 2012, which indicates that we were in okay position at that time, but within a matter of months, we were in this position. So just goes to show that things can change really quickly. So it's always important to remember that. Um, this was a year that we received less than 15 inches of rain for that entire year, so I remember that very clearly. Um, this is a picture of a drought outlook for our area. That's good through April 30th, and as you can see right now, we are in good shape. So hopefully with the moisture we've been receiving, we will continue that trend through the growing season. Just to recap, 2018 was the third wettest year on record, um, according to the uh, 30 year average and 2019 was very wet as well. We were well above average, but just to give you perspective, we were still over seven inches above average, yet we were not nearly what we had in 2018. So things were a little bit less, but still in great shape. Moving into rebate programs for 2019, toilet rebate again was the most popular rebate program that we have. Um, definitely one that I get a lot of, a lot of, uh, rebate forms coming in for. In 2019, we had 347 total toilets replaced. Um, there was 449 in 2018, but I will note that a hotel had replaced 98 of those in 2018, so that accounts for some of that difference there. The majority, or 62% of those toilets that were rebated were for the most efficient toilet you can purchase in Hayes, which is your 0.8 gallon per flush toilet. Um, so that's an increase over 2018, that toilet's becoming more popular, I think. And as you can see, potential water saved, um, 8.3 acre feet. Paula, can I interject something? Yes. Um, so just for the sake of the new commissioners, um, yes. to add an additional acre foot of water is going to cost us about $15,000 $15, an acre foot. Um, for example, the R9 project. Um, so when Holly says we can save 8.3 acres acre feet with a $37,000 investment, that's a pretty good deal for us because you also don't have your ongoing production cost of the new revenue new source. Thank you um, for bringing that up. And I did actually calculate that. I don't have it on the screen, but um, at 15,000 an acre foot, it's about $124,500. Wow. So. Um, Going into the washing machine rebate program, in 2019 we had 85 total replaced, which was less than in 2018. 95% um, of those, however, were integrated water factor of 3.2 or less. So to stipulate for or to qualify for the rebate, at that time it was 3.7 or less was the required integrated water factor. Um, and so the majority of them were well above or well below that, I should say. Again, potential water saved, 2.8 acre feet. I'll bring up right now, um, new for 2020 with the washing machine rebate is that we did increase the rebate for those 3.2 integrated water factor or less to $250. And I don't know if the last month and a half are any indication, but I see more of those rebates coming in right now. So that was the whole goal was to get a little more participation. Um, right now, it seems like it's doing its job. We'll see as the year goes on. Um, didn't want to eliminate that uh, $100 rebate for the 3.7 to 3.3 integrated water factor. But really, the majority of the machines you buy nowadays are under that 3.7, unless it's a top load type machine. Talking about turf conversions, 2019 was a great year for turf conversions. <coughs> um, I promoted it a lot. We had great weather. It rained at the right times in 2019. So we had 21 total conversions in 2019, which accounted for over 41,000 square feet converted total. Um, and we only had nine in 2018. But as you recall, the weather in 2018 just wasn't that great for turf conversions. Since uh, with turf conversions, they have a year to get that conversion completed. So we do have some pre-inspections that were done in 2019 that are still pending. And so that's what the pending conversions square footage is listed there. 
new for 2020 going into what's new here real quickly um, for the turf conversion rebate we did go ahead and increase that square footage maximum to 3,000 square feet for 2020 um, main goal there is those straight turf to turf conversions um, are really beneficial as far as water savings go and that is a little bit of a more incentive sometimes to get those people to switch over to a warm season turf grass or drought tolerant landscaping of some kind and maybe help with the costs associated with that. Um, I know I had a homeowner that was concerned about water bills during that time to get the conversion done and things like that. So upped it to 3,000 square feet. Um, something very new for 2020 is we'll be offering a buffalo grass seed rebate. So we will pay $10 per pound of buffalo grass seed and I will have to go through the same process as I do for the turf conversion currently. So there, there will be a pre-inspection where I will go and inspect the lawn, make sure they qualify. They have to have full sun. They have to have good conditions for buffalo grass to grow um, to qualify. And then I will do the measurements and tell them how many pounds of buffalo grass seed they will need. Seeding rates for that are much, much lower than your typical cool season turf grass. So it might only be one to three pounds per thousand square feet versus seven or eight. Um, but we will go ahead and, and try that this year. I don't know how it will work out, but all the rebate details can be found at watersmarthaze.com if you have um, well, more what, questions what about that. What is the going price for uh, buffalo grass? Good question. Buffalo grass is typically a very expensive grass seed, and so it depends on your source. Um, I know some guys buy it in bulk, you know, the contractors and things, and they may pay 10 to $12 a pound, but generally if you're buying it, at one of the big box stores or one of the local retailers that might be up to $28 a pound or more. So. Um, Showerhead program, of course, we've had this for many, many years and 2019 was a good year for showerheads too. Um, we had 242 total distributed and again, acre feet saved potentially with that 4.9. Um, I do believe some of the increase here was we did distribute those at basketball game that I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, but we had a couple of those events where we handed out shower heads. Next, I'll move into education and outreach. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about everything on this list, but it's just simply to show that it's communication. So in all shapes, forms, all different methods, um, this is just a laundry list of things that were done in 2019. Um, one of the biggest benefits, I think, was the ability to um, direct people directly to that WaterSmart Hayes website. And I appreciate so much the ability to go in and actually update this page when I need to make additions and changes. And in talking with IT, we were in the top 10 of city pages visited. So, um, you know, I think that's great. We we're up there with police of those types of pages so bids things like that but hopefully we can do more work with that in 2020. I'm going into some of the events we did sponsor in conjunction with uh, KSU Watersheds a Fort Hayes basketball game back in February of last year over 3,500 people attended and we gave out those shower heads and things like that and educational information um, one of the nice <coughs> things is that both teams men's and women's were wearing shirts that had do your part be water smart and kind of promoting the city of Hayes um, message through that. <coughs> going into traditional media and digital media, I'm not going to read these numbers to you, you can see them, but a lot of that takes place in the water conservation program. So, you know, when you start adding up those numbers, it even surprises me sometimes how many total TV spots aired and total radio spots aired. Um, the digital media <coughs> with the banner ads and things, those are typically directed right back to the website or to a specific document, whether it's a toilet rebate form or something like that. And just to give you a couple examples, many of you have seen some of these, but these are some of the digital ads that were used in 2019 um, through various outlets. And just very basic general information, but they click back and can get more information that way. Social media, very much used in water conservation. And now you can follow us on all three of these. Last year it was just Facebook and Twitter. Now we're on Instagram. Not gonna, 
not going to say <laughs> that we're real active on Instagram yet, but we're working on it. And any of these, you can find us easily if you go to Atwater Smart Haze. And just a couple of examples. Again, 2019, this was a very popular post. Um, people see that and they share that one quite a bit. Um, again, promoting turf conversions. It's helpful if you know what qualifies. This yard qualifies for sure. So trying to promote that. Um, just simple messages, trying to get the word out any way we can. And again, we try to partner with um, EPA Water Sense or Irrigation Association. They have July as Smart Irrigation Month, so trying to target some education in those areas as well. Going into some of the educational events, World Water Day Fun Fest, it was the second day for this. This is an event that we hold um, at Sternberg Museum in the lobby. And during spring break, we tried it a couple years ago and it worked well, so we did it again. And once again, it was a success. We had almost 300 people come through. And this is a, a workshop or a program that would not be possible without community partners. So we had the environmental office um, and we had extension office, master gardeners, others in the community that helped with this, this event. And so going around and looking at displays, participating in crafts and things related to water conservation. And of course, the Water Resources Department staff was a big part of this as well. And so just a few more pictures from that. Um, one thing that I participated in in 2019 was the Fort Hayes Ag Day. And this is an event that takes place on their quad. And I was just there to provide information, talk about mulch, name that turf grass. A lot of people couldn't name that turf grass, but we, we tried it. So talking about mulch and just trying to be, again, where people are and talking about anything water conservation related. A spring art walk, another highly uh, attended event. And so Stacy Minson and I partner together on this and we provide information along with root beer and cookies. And um, the main purpose of this is to highlight the posters that we have through our water poster contest, which is truly art. So we always display those and we have a lot of people stop by and take a look at those and check those out. And then we also have some giveaways Toilet on the sidewalk was huge con conversation piece, <laughs> <laughs> as you might imagine. So it catches people's <coughs> eye, and of course, Water Smart Wally was there, and he's always a popular <coughs> attraction. One new thing that we did in 2019, I partnered with Parks Department and Jeff um, to do some mulch loading events. We're always promoting mulch for water conservation, organic matter, those sorts of things. So we did one in June and one in September. And the one in June was highly successful. The one in September, not so much, but it was still a good um, event to get the word out. And we had one of the parks employees there to load people up with mulch. And if you've ever had to do that yourself, you know that's a good benefit to have someone there to load it for you. Go Trek Go, getting into the fall now. This is an event that uh, Early Childhood Connections puts on. This year it was outside, highly attended, um, tons of small children and families there. Um, Water Smart Wally, again, hugely popular. I played a little game with the kids, flush it or trash it. Sounds very simple, but the little ones loved it. And of course their parents are there. So you can talk about flushable wipes and those things that are not um, things that you want to put down the toilet. We participated in Wild West Fest Parade this year, as well as the Fort Hayes Homecoming Parade. So again, Water Smart Wally was there, and we handed out little messages encouraging people to be water smart, along with our information about how to find our website and things like that. Um, water festivals, participate in those as well. And again, reaching out to your middle school kids, sixth and seventh graders primarily, and we play a game called Water Smart Grudge Ball, where we do water trivia and gets the kids engaged because we're playing games and stealing raindrops from the other team. So that's always a popular game with them and gets them involved. Once again, in 2019, I had the opportunity to send toilet dye tabs home with every elementary student in Hayes. And that was over 1,800 of those. And so I couldn't do this without good helpers to help staple die tabs to every single one of those um, little sheets of paper that tell you how to do that. But the main goal there is to promote Fix the Leak Week, which is an EPA water sense <coughs> supported program, and it helps get the word out about um, 
how to test for those things. And it's fun to read some of the comments that come back on that. We also do some radio trivia and give out some prizes through that whole week. Another thing that I got to participate in this year that I hadn't in the past was Kids Ag Day, which is um, sponsored by Farm Bureau. And so this was out um, just south of town, but I was there to have a station about water and talked about the water cycle and that there is no new water and where water comes from, which by the way, the number one answer I got was the water tower. <laughs> um, so there's some education to be done there and we did that that day, but it was all fifth graders in USD 49. So that was a good opportunity, and hopefully we'll get to participate in that again this year. And of course, when I can, um, when I get invited, I go into the schools. This was Lincoln El Elementary School, fourth grade class. Um, we talked about water conservation, what they could do, and we played Water Smart Bingo or Water Conservation Bingo, which was a big hit with those kids. Um, again, there's so many more things I could talk about, but I know you don't want me here all night. so. But Water Smart Landscape Awards and things like that, other presentations. In 2020 and beyond, kind of continuing what we've been doing, I really would like to build up the web pages. That's one of my goals for the Water Smart Landscaping side of things. And just continue to build on those, try to go where the people are um, and get the word out as we can. Work with Stacy Minson again on the water. Uh, poster contest and art walk and other things like that. Um, and just continue to look for new ways to save water within the city and try to help educate others about how to do that. So do you have any questions? You know, Holly, I hear as much about what you do with water education in this community <coughs> than I do as any other department and any other thing that's going on. <coughs> when you get kids involved, they are talking about it all the time, and you are you have really done an outstanding job. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. I, I would agree. I mean, when you hear the radio, just the commercials, they're you're asking people to conserve, but it's very positive, mm -hmm. and and that's the thing I hear is you know it's not so negative about oh you need to do this, and it's just a way of life here. And I really like the um, the Facebook. I see it on you know the newspaper Hayes Post. I, you know, and it's it's really good stuff. I mean, it's everywhere you look, you see it, and it's the right thing to do. So great job to you and your team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Holly. Holly. Next item on the agenda, golf course mowers purchase. Mr. Boyle. Has, are you going to be as interesting as Holly was? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I will not stand up to the <laughs> interesting stuff. Really, so this will be rather boring for you. <laughs> uh, Jeff Boyle, Director of Parks. Uh, here this evening to seek approval to purchase two greens mowers for the golf course. Uh, this particular unit was due for replacement for number 494 in 2018. And its twin brother, number 495, was also due in 2018. Both these mowers were bumped a little bit. They were still in good shape and running, but the hydraulics on them have slowed way down um, and just having some issues with them. So it's time for, we don't want these on our golf course greens. Uh, we talked last week, that's the most important spot we have out there. So. Uh, we need good running equipment that's not going to drip oil and, and leak all over our greens. These particular mowers are Jacobson models. Um, we have a lot of reels for various tasks on the greens. We have verticutters, we have sand heads, we have vibrating reels, we have um, spiker reels for aerating. So we have a lot of different reels. These only fit Jacobson mowers. The value of these reels are approximately $35,000 to replace them all with new. So what has happened year in the years past, Jacobson has always been the low bid because their mower has been built identical for 20 some years. Um, they're always low bid. We started with Jacobson's and as you can see here, we've accumulated a plethora of reels to make sure that we're doing our uh, appropriate work on our greens and getting the job done. Um, so we are recommending to go with Jacobson mowers because of that reason. We did check with John Deere and Toro, who also make greens mowers, to purchase their mowers. The John Deere's between 28 and 29,000, and the Toro's are 31,500. Nothing wrong with the units, but we'd have to turn around and buy $35,000 worth of reels for them. So since we don't have really that many issues with the Jacobson's and they run good and they last a long time, uh, there's no reason for us to make a change at this point. 
Um, this is a picture of the vibrating reels on the left and the spiker heads on the right. So what we're asking this evening is for approval to purchase two of the Jacobson mowers for a total of $53,320, which is $334 under budget. I move we approve the bid from Kansas Golf and Turf for two Jacobson Greens King four mowers for, the, for an amount of $53,320 from the new equipment reserve budget. I'll second. Motion, second. Comments? I just was thinking of Commissioner um, comment last week from Commissioner Burgess <laughs> about keeping the other mowers. We are doing that instead of trading them in. Did we I think it would be in our best interest to just keep the yeah. one to put the vibrating reels on. Uh, we're, we are low on space. I did talk to Kevin. Of course, it would be nice to, if we had extra room to have one when the verter cutter goes out. We don't have to sit there and change the heads out. I think it's probably going to get in the way more than anything. It's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. It makes perfect sense. but. Because of the condition of the mower, I don't think that second one is probably anything we really want to keep around. So. Thank you. Yeah, I had sent an email asking for follow up, and he'd replied back on that. Um, and I'd asked about a trade in, and they're not interested in trade. Okay. Kansas Golf and Turf is not interested in trade in, so these will it ended up on Purple Wave. For <coughs> third, third year warranty he said these come with two year warranties. Correct. You can buy a third year, but the salesman has said. Nobody's ever bought it. He so said nobody's ever bought the third year. Ready to make more commission. You got to I, <laughs> yep. What does the warranties uh, cover and entail? Because don't we kind of do our own maintenance? We do our repairs? own maintenance. The warranty wouldn't cover rotating items like bearings. Um, it wouldn't cover us drive, hitting a rock with our blade on, our, on the front end on the deck. Wouldn't cover anything like that. It would cover frame structure, engine failure, uh, steering and, and steering knuckle deals, hydraulic motors, uh, probably cover those. So it's not a bumper to bumper, but it, 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 it literally, basically his words were, nothing that rotates is covered. So. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Who, who say nay? Aye, vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, street maintenance program and water bids. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm John Brown, the Project Manager. I'm filling in for the Public Works Director, Jesse Rohr, who uh, presented last week but is out of town today. Um, as you remember, back in December, we presented a plan for street maintenance in 2020. Since that time, those projects were advertised and bids have been received. Tonight, you are asked to consider awarding bids for 16 different projects to be accomplished this year. Uh, the funding uh, for this year is a little under $1.8 million budgeted uh, for street maintenance. Uh, that funding primarily comes from the gas tax refund from the state and connecting link dollars. Um, then there's also some uh, almost $200,000 of cash carryover from last year. And then the normal uh, last few years they've been tra transferring $500,000 from the general fund and then the $500,000 from the City Commission Capital Reserve it was for uh, uh, the um, canal project that was listed in the CIP of the budget. Um, so the program that we presented back in December, uh, sh this slide shows the breakout of how we proposed to uh, bid those projects out. And as I go along, I'll describe a little bit of variation. We in developing the project and getting it out to bid, we discovered that we could actually add a little, a couple extra areas, and I'll talk about those as we move, move along. And this map does show the areas, and uh, you'll see that um, we added some of the major rehab areas from what was presented back in December. Um, on January 28th, we did receive uh, bids from 10 different contractors uh, bidding on those 16 different projects. The bid uh, documents were structured so that the contractors could bid on one or more of the various projects. Um, and several of those uh, 10 bidders were low bid on more than one of the projects, obviously. <clears throat> um, the first, first project is seal coat. A seal coat is a bituminous liquid mixture that is applied to the asphalt pavement. Uh, seal coat has a smooth black finish that does not have rock surface like chip seals. And the seal coat will fill in the fine cracks 
and preserve the life of the asphalt streets. Uh, most of the streets identified for seal coat are uh, either on the east side of town or in the Thunderbird area. Uh, Circle C paving was the low bidder uh, for this project and they've done seal coat for us in the past. Um, for several years, uh, Chip Seal was the workhorse of Asphalt Street Maintenance Program. However, we've found that the seal coat, as I just previously described, has proven to be a little bit less costly and more aesthetically pleasing uh, for keeping the asphalt residential streets in good shape. Um, there was some Chip Seal applied in 2018, but none in 2019. In 2020, we are proposing or have taken bids for Chip Seal to be some uh, outlying areas kind of in the south part of town, um, Sports Complex Road, up in the north part by KDOT and Frontier Road, up on 55th Street. Um, these are areas that um, are well suited to the Chip Seal and not in residential areas necessarily where uh, people tend to uh, complain about the loose chips and dust and stuff like that. Um, APAC was a low bidder for this project and uh, see their Emporia branch that does this and, and they've done it uh, before us for us as well and they, they do a good job. Um, I might mention too that um, um, some of the chip seal is I think is being funded out of water uh, capital for a water budget for the water plant, uh, the rest of it's out of special highway. A uh, poly patch um, is somewhat of an enhanced crack seal material. It has some aggregate in it. It's for the larger cracks and depressions. And a lot of this is uh, prep work for some of the other uh, surface treatments that we do, like the seals and stuff like that. Um, poly patch uh, for this year is can primarily, <coughs> primarily be located up in the northwest part of town. Some of these asphalt streets are reaching 20 plus years in age and are starting to develop some of those larger cracks and uh, we'll get on those, get those closed up to keep those streets in good shape. Uh, Stripe and Seal of Hayes was the low bidder for poly patch and, and they've done poly patch for us before. They do a, a good job. Curb and brick repair is typically performed in the older uh, brick street areas of the town. Um, the uh, first area is the 1100 block of pine and the uh, low bid for this area is uh, Morgan Brothers out of, La, out of La Crosse and you can see that's pretty much about a half a block uh, curb to curb of brick replacement with curb and gutter and some sidewalk and some ADA type stuff that we'll be addressing at the same time in that area. Um, another area is 1500 block of walnut. This too is um, a Curb to curb, brick replacement, curb and gutter, some driveway, alley entrance, and Morgan Brothers got the low bid on that one as well. Uh, another area of curb and brick is on 13th Street between Main and Fort, and that's isolated areas, little like 10 by 10, 10 by 20 patches that we'll be doing on 13th Street there where the um, brick has settled. And then another part of this project is doing some joint repair on Main Street back in, I think about 1995, when uh, Main Street was repaved with, um, it's a newer paving brick, but the joints uh, with the concrete underneath the brick, um, the sand has migrated down through those joints and caused the brick to settle. So we'll be taking out like a two or three foot wide strip of brick across there put a paving fabric across, across that joint, reestablish the sand bed, put the brick back to uh, get rid of those dips in the brick on Main Street. And uh, Morgan Brothers was the low bidder on this project as well. Then we move on to the um, 100 block of East 10th Street. It will be reconstructed uh, with brick construction as well as some areas of concrete curbing, valley gutter, and sidewalk. The project was bid as a base plus an alternate to provide options for awarding contracts should the bid prices have been higher than expected. Since the bid prices were within budget, staff recommends awarding both the base and the alternate bid. Uh, the low bid came from Morgan Brothers, the total, uh, total base plus alternate of $124,056. And there was some discussion at last week's work session regarding this area. 
and making sure that the contractor gets the work done in a timely manner. Morgan Brothers has assured us that they will provide the best product <coughs> in the fastest time frame possible. And with the concurrence of the city attorney, an addendum to the contract documents has been added and, and agreed to and signed by Morgan Brothers that allows no more than 32 working days for this project to be constructed. And um, we also discussed with the downtown Hayes folks and the uh, contractor and other stakeholders that getting on this project as soon as possible is the best scenario for everyone and getting it done before the farmer's market season starts up and some of the summer uh, uses of the uh, pavilion area down there. So um, closure of this street will be necessary for reconstruction, but pedestrian access to the pavilion will always be maintained throughout. John, on this, uh, we'll have weather days, uh, which could figure into that. Uh, do we decide what we consider weather days or does the contractor decide? No, we, we decide. Um, our, the city inspector, Curtis Weber, uh, under my direction, will determine whether the contractor is able to work on any <coughs> given day due to weather, and then we will count that as uh, if they're able to work. We count that down, and once the contract time has expired, they will be charged liquidated damages um, for any days going over that contract time. Thank you, John. Oh, and I also want to say I was contacted right before the meeting, somebody asking about, you know, this is going to affect, you know, something that's going on down there. And, you know, no matter where we do construction of streets, it's going to interrupt something. It's going to bother somebody. But if you've driven this street, it is, you know, for as much activity down there, it's one of the worst streets in town, in my opinion. And it needs to be done. And I just, we ask people to be patient. And I think Morgan Brothers has done good work in this community before, and as with all these contractors, and I think they will do it again. And, you know, and I appreciate the attorney, you know, John, for getting on those guys, but I, I think they'll do a great job if they want to continue to do work here in the city of Hayes. John did the heavy lifting on that. Thank you, John. Whoever did it, thank you. John, John just gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> did they give you any indication <coughs> how soon they thought they could start? Actually, they're currently doing sidewalk uh, work for a parks department, some areas around the parks, and they think that they've got about two weeks left to finish that up. Uh, so they plan on moving right into this wow, as soon that's as fantastic. they can they get that work done. We, they obviously have to get the contracts executed, get their bonds and stuff, um, but and then whatever mobilization they need as far as uh, materials, the dowel baskets and stuff like that, they need to get on order. But I think within two to three weeks, they ought to be getting That's started wonderful. on it. So. The only business that I know that could be impacted by this a little bit it would be Furniture Look. They have deliveries come down there, I believe. Is I, there an alternate route in there? I, I talked to Karen the other day, and uh, she can she can utilize the alley. I think she's going to have to oh, take good. down a sh section of fence there, but she can they can get down the alley. And, and very good. So Karen very was... He'll be as happy as anybody the, yeah. to have it done, yeah. yeah. She was very happy. In fact, or initially we talked about starting in June, and she said, June's have to be my birthday. And I said, that'd be a great <laughs> birthday. <present." laughs> so now I have to break the news to her that we're actually going to start earlier. So, yeah. well, this is really good news. That's going to be wonderful to have that street done, because I agree with the mayor. that, And I will say that is the worst street in town. So it would be nice to have it done. John, we are going back all brick, correct? Yes, uh, there will be like it's like a four foot wide strip of concrete valley gutter that runs down the um, south side of it. But there'll be actually probably more brick than there actually is right now. If, but it'll be take out all those patches and. Stuff. So they'll take and pull that brick up, clean it, and then use what we have in stock also. Right. Um, there's not a lot of salvageable brick down there, so before they tear anything up down there we're going to make sure that they've got enough brick cleaned ready to go sorted stacked so they're not sitting there trying to figure out which brick they're going to use while it's tore up and what i'm saying i guess is this brick will be old time brick it will be old time we, brick that we've taken off of other places yes thank you mm -hmm. So the next project is uh, Canal Boulevard. Um, as Jesse mentioned last last week, um, there was a water line upgrade along Canal a few years ago, and the west one third of that street was uh, replaced with the water line project. We're going to come back now and do the east two thirds of that street, very similar to what we did on Allen, or not Allen, Ash, 
this past past summer. Um, and we'll be correcting some ADA deficiencies in driveways, uh, alley entrances and stuff like that, some sidewalk stuff while we're doing the pavement. Um, there's also some uh, storm sewer work that's going to be done at the north end of the project. Um, this will all mesh in with the reconstruction of 27th Street um, from Hall to Fort in 2021. The uh, low bidder for this project is J Corp of Hayes. Another portion of the project is Lincoln uh, from 19th to 20th. Uh, this was one that I mentioned we did not talk about back in December. We added this section on because um, the quantities and unit prices allowed us to add some uh, other locations and still stay within the budget funds available. J Corp was low bid on this one as well. Um, another section is General Custer, the 700 block of General Custer down by the uh, water reclamation facility. Um, APAC was the low bidder of this project and the uh, north portion of the project will be done in concrete. Uh, south of the new entrance into the water plant uh, will be an asphalt overlay and then there is some minor storm uh, sewer drain improvements that will be made in the process of, of doing this work as well. Uh, while the existing asphalt surface does have a lot of alligator cracking, it will provide a good base uh, for the asphalt overlay to the south of the entrance to the water reclamation facility. Um, another project is General Custer from 22nd to Centennial. Uh, this project will involve the full replacement of the concrete pavement and any necessary curb and gutter and sidewalk. Um, J Corp was the uh, low bidder on this particular project. Um, as you can see from the pictures, the pavement is, is pretty bad in this area. This is also another project that was added uh, that was not shown in December. Uh, next project, we'll reconstruct the 800 block of Milner. That'd be uh, Milner between 8th and 9th Street. Uh, Paul Wurtenberger Construction was the low bidder on this project. And also you can see from these pictures, the pavement is um, in pretty bad shape and is another project that we added on since the presentation in December. Um, this project here, it would reconstruct the alley um, just right outside here in the 100 block between West 15th and 16th Street with new concrete pavement. Uh, the alley is highly traveled and a good candidate for total replacement with new concrete pavement. Uh, the project also includes a portion of an existing retaining wall toward the west end of the alley and uh, would restore some brick along Fort Street that had been a utility patch in the past. Uh, Morgan Brothers was the low bidder on this project as well. And um, this project too was the discussion at last week's work session regarding making sure that the contractor gets the work done in a timely manner. And it's also included in that addendum that I talked about previously. And uh, the contractor now has 26 working days to get this project completed. Um, there's a project to reconstruct Mopar uh, from the west side of Roth Avenue to the west side of the old Chicago uh, drive entrance. Um, Paul Wurtenberger Construction of Hayes was awarded this uh, project. And um, the Avid Hotel that's going in to the west of old Chicago is actually constructing a portion of Mopar west <coughs> of old Chicago entrance. And then our project will fill in the gap between what the Avid Hotel is doing and where the uh, intersection with Roth Avenue is at. And Mopar then becomes, actually becomes the main entrance to the Avid Hotel when it's completed. Um, there's actually uh, pavement markings. There's three areas for new pavement markings were bid. Um, many of these areas have not had new pavement markings in several years and the ref reflectivity is gone and it makes nighttime driving uh, very difficult. Um, the first of the three areas is from Eighth, is on A Street from Milner to Elm. Uh, Sillison and Sons of Wichita was the low bidder uh, for this section of the pavement marking project. 
The second and the largest area is Hall Street from 27th Street um, south to 8th Street. And Road Safe of Wichita was the low bidder for this project. And then the final portion of the project, uh, we bid it as an ad alternate, but we have funding, so we're recommending to add this as well. And that's the section of A Street uh, west of Elm to the city limits, and Road Safe of Wichita was also the low bidder on this portion. Um, the next uh, few items are not included as action items for tonight, but round out the 2020 street maintenance program. And the first of those is the installation of a pedestrian crossing near the intersection of East 27th Street and Sherman Avenue. This would be accomplished in-house by Service Division of Public Works. Um, there's a lot of pedestrians crossing in this area uh, with the apartment complexes on the north side of 27th and the commercial areas on the south side of 27th. Uh, this will also provide a safer crossing point for residents on the south side crossing access to Abelbickle Park. Uh, the project will include uh, rectangular rapid flash beacons as well as crosswalk pavement markings and ADA curb ramps. Uh, these would be similar to the most recent crossings uh, with the rapid flash beacons at 20th <coughs> MacArthur and 19th and Hall Street. Uh, there is a project currently out to bid to construct sidewalk in the uh, 300 block of Elm across from Lewis Field Stadium, East 27th Street near Chitola Creek and West 27th near Augusta Lane and the 1700 block of Canterbury um, if there is adequate funding to do all those. And an award a bid for this project will be brought to the commission at a later date. And finally, approximately $87,000 is set aside to augment the purchase of crack seal material, asphalt, concrete, and other materials for city crews to perform in-house street maintenance. Uh, much of which is in preparation for the surface treatments, the seal coat and stuff like that. Uh, so here's a compilation of the various project and total costs. The, the bottom, if you can see that small, there's about $80,000 remaining, which is about 4% of the total project costs. And that should cover any, any unexpected overruns that may occur during construction, which are, are typical. Um, as far as schedule, we've talked some already, but seal coat and chip seal would typically be accomplished during the summer when the warmer temperatures are more fav favorable for those types of surface treatments. But other projects could begin sooner uh, based on weather and other scheduling considerations. All projects are scheduled to be completed no later than the end of 2020 unless they have a previously discussed uh, contract completion date. Um, Contact with the adjacent property owners and stakeholders will be made well in advance of any construction activities. So your options are to award the contracts as recommended by staff or provide alternate direction. And the while the next two slides show all the individual bids listed, uh, the motion can simply state to authorize the city manager to enter the contracts for construction as presented in amounts specified to be paid out of the funds identified by staff. I move we authorize the city manager to enter in contracts for construction as presented in the amount specified to be paid out of the funds identified by staff. Seconded. Motion and second. Comments? Lots of good work. Lots of good work to be done. It's going to be a busy summer. Summer, <laughs> summer, busy streets. Thank you, John, for all your work on that. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Justice 5 -0. Next item on the agenda is City Manager Employment Agreement, 12th Amendment Agenda. Uh, the City Commission recently conducted my performance evaluation, and so you are now being presented with an addendum to my contract. Um, this addendum would um, provide me with the same raise that all the other city employees received for 2020. I'll make a motion that we approve the 12th addendum to the City Manager Toba Daughters Employment Agreement dated June 28, 2007, as presented. Second. Motion and second. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, as all your employees, we appreciate what you do for our community. And, uh, you know, we're getting closer, we think, on our water project. And oh. We know you're the man to lead us there, so keep up the good work. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 That's 5 0. And we have progress this month. 
Well, good evening, Colin Belzer, Assistant City Manager. Um, for the progress report this month, uh, Public Works have been working on some alley maintenance. Um, that is ongoing and will continue through the spring and summer. <coughs> they also removed a large tree that had fallen into Chola Creek or Chola near the compost site. And as we all know, they uh, removed some <coughs> street lights down in the downtown area and they've gotten a facelift and they're now back in operation. They look so good. They I do. Mean, really good. Thank you. Um, the Hayes Fire Department did host a leadership uh, session that's sponsored by the University of Kansas Fire and Rescue Training Institute. This is something that the fire department does every year, and there's representatives from all of Northwest Kansas um, from fire departments. FHSU, or Fort Hayes, has started construction on the classroom, the training facility. Uh, North Central Kansas Tech will do the plumbing and electrical, and then HVAC will go out to bid at some point. They also complete their annual test. Uh, this is something they um, do every year where they simulate the work of a firefighter and they uh, use one bottle while they do it, one air, uh, air unit, which lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. So they pull, pull ropes, climb ladders, um, and do that type of simulation. Parks Department, uh, they resurfaced the tennis uh, courts and made some into pickleball courts. And, uh, they're on the far left and they're being heavily utilized. So that was, I think, a new thing that we did this year. So it's good to see. Uh, we did replace some barbed wire fence at the, at the bison pens to make it a more safe environment for visitors. We also installed some delineators to prevent damage to newly seeded turf in the east area of uh, uh, Frontier Park for people just driving off, you know, not staying on the road. Matt Wintholtz and Joshua Supis uh, recently completed the arborist training, and so now they're certified arborists for the city. And then we continue to trim uh, trees. Here they are in Massey Park, and then also doing it at the cemetery and borrowing uh, the Public Works bucket truck, so helping each other out. The police department uh, participate in reality-based training. This is when they simulate uh, an, op or an incident. They use a building, and they have role uh, players and they try to do this twice a year. We also had uh, officers present to some health classes at the high school um, regarding law surrounding marijuana, tobacco, and alcohol. So there were two separate uh, presentations on the left is Officer Dakota Goley and on the right is Capital David Velising. Learning these Hayes names. <laughs> 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 um, Water plant tours were conducted. On the left is the Kansas Academy of Mathematics and Science for students at Fort Hayes, and on the right is a group of fifth grade, um, fifth graders. Holly Dickman, as you heard uh, earlier, she presented to the, to the Science Cafe. We've been doing some drain valve repairs, so there are six final filters in the uh, water distribution system. This is where they finally go into the distribution system out and inside those pipes are some valves that can speak to SCADA. Um, the models that are in there currently are 2002 and so we've replaced them and we've done three out of six. Wally attended the mascot basketball game and then obviously the police were there too. And then we removed a structure at the R9 ranch. It was a, basically a shell of a building that uh, crews took down and Sold off our scrap metal, correct? Mentioned in Beers Bureau had uh, first responders appreciation breakfast. This was in conjunction with downtown Hayes, uh, the chamber, uh, Grow Hayes, and they fed about uh, 60 people. I should go back real quick. And all the food was donated by the press. We welcomed 160 guests uh, for the Night to Shine event. It's a prom and red carpet event for individuals with dis developmental disabilities. We had the airport sponsored uh, basketball event that the CVB helped with, and obviously it was an airport um, uh, department event as well. We had some help from some commissioners, gave out some luggage tags, um, and it was well well tended. And we uh, received a game ball, which I thought was pretty neat. And then we continued to promote Hayes. There's Janet Kuhn um, at a, an event at the Capitol uh, within the last month. She attended the Wichita Sports Show and the Omaha International Boat Sports and Travel Show. North Vine Street Corridor Project, so we have updated renderings that are on our uh, city website, 
KDOT has officially started advertising this project for bids, which bid letting will be March 25th. Staff will present a full project update at your March 12th regular meeting. We also are uh, doing some sidewalk improvements, as you know, and those are out to bid currently for a March 17th bid letting. And April 2nd, uh, they'll be presented to you at the work session. And then lastly, uh, 60 employees completed CPR and first aid certification that was trained or participated or helped through the Ellis County EMS. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Right. <coughs> Mr. McCormick, Mr. Milik, welcome to all of the wrestlers that are here in town this weekend, big events, so that's great for our community. To kind of go <coughs> off that, uh, congrats uh, to Sarah Zimmerman, who's a Hayes High freshman who placed sixth at the inaugural Girls State Wrestling Championship today. Um, so that's that's awesome. That was a great event. I actually went for a while. Didn't get to stay for the, the medal rounds because I had a meeting to attend. <laughs> um, that's really like Ron <laughs> said, I'm. This is my favorite time of year. We got state wrestling here tomorrow and Saturday, and then we have Division Two regional, super regionals on Sunday, so it's uh, going to be a fun weekend around town. Tyler has nothing. Um, I'd just like to comment, so often we hear about um, people saying, gosh, there's just nothing to do in this community. <laughs> Anybody that saw the list that was prepared for our department to find out what was happening in downtown that could be impacted by 10th Street, between April 3rd and December 12th, there's 61 events. And that's only those that are already scheduled. Mm -hmm. There will be more added throughout the year. But 61 events, most of those are happening in the pavilion. So it's really exciting. And if people get out and look at our website, see the CBB website, Downtown Hayes website, all of that information is out there. And there's lots to do in Hayes America. I would agree with that. Um, I just wanted to ask the commission. Um, we've all uh, got an email from uh, I guess Becky with KYS inviting us to, after commission meetings, uh, go back to what we used to do and have, a, I guess, about 30-minute meetings, discuss uh, tonight's meeting. I know we're watched by millions, but some people, <laughs> some people miss it. And uh, I've heard many people wish we would do it. I know I enjoy the county and the school updates and wanted to see what you guys' thoughts were on that. I'm willing to participate. <coughs> I don't mind. It's just, uh, can we do it earlier? Kind of makes it tough to make it back to work. I'm not in charge of programming, so I don't. <laughs> I, uh, I guess that's something maybe we can work out if it's possible for them. But I'm, I'm all for it, and I, I'd said I would do, for sure do it tomorrow. And then I think Andrea hopefully will uh, do some scheduling for it. And, and in the past, you know, if you were scheduled, if you couldn't do it, then you know another commissioner would fill in for you if possible. But so. it's your job to find your replacement. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not Andrea. Don't make Andrea. If, yeah. if the commission is <laughs> interested in starting up again, we'll. Mayor and I can do it tomorrow, but then we will get a hold of Becky and see about um, what uh, if, if we can move it up a little bit earlier um, to accommodate, better accommodate the commission. And then Andrew will work on scheduling, scheduling everyone. That works for me. Sounds good. Okay, good. Okay. All right, that's it. We're adjourned.